Those cute storage baskets and expensive organizational products actually aren't helping you to declutter. Now, don't get me wrong, they have their time and their place, but that's only after the fact that you've decluttered as much as humanly possible and only need to organize what's left. But for most people, most people actually start with the organizational process instead of the declutter process. And those little baskets and bins and boxes only enable us to hang on to way too much. So let's talk about some things that you actually do not need in order to successfully declutter. So let's take a step back and define what it actually means to declutter because so many people confuse decluttering with organization, even though they are completely two different things. I used to think that anytime I was looking at piles of random junk or clearly clutter or just too much, all of it was really clutter, but I thought I had an organization problem, not a clutter problem. So light bulb moment, <laughs> if this is resonating, you probably have a clutter problem too, and it's time to change your tactic and strategy from organizing to decluttering. Decluttering in a nutshell is to remove unnecessary or excess or unneeded items from a space or a home. That's it. It's really simple. Now the emphasis I want to put right here is to remove. It's not to move and shuffle into a new bin, right? Notice in the definition, it doesn't say to buy new bins and shove your things into them because that's not decluttering. That is organizing. It's organizing clutter in most cases. So take this as your sign, some tough love from your coach, Katie, your declutter bestie you didn't know you needed to shift your intention from trying to out-organize your clutter to actually getting it out of your home and decluttering it. I love decluttering not only because of the numerous benefits, but because it's so simple. You literally don't need anything and maybe a trash bag at the most. And if you're feeling squirrely, maybe you can set a timer on your phone or on your oven, but most people have these in their homes already or an empty cardboard box. Or if you're like, Katie, I don't have a bin or a box to put stuff into, then I'm going to tell you to go find a box and declutter the stuff out of it because there's probably stuff you don't need in there. And then voila, you have a box. You don't need to go buy anything new and we can just get a little resourceful and I promise you can make it happen. Decluttering at its core is so simplistic. It's letting go so you can focus on what matters most. Now, maybe if you're a fan of the show like The Home Edit or you lust after these celebrity pantries, like the Kardashians just showed their pantry on video not too long ago and people were going crazy over it. It was just stunning. And I actually read an article that Khloe Kardashian spent $2,000 on jars and organizational products for her pantry alone. Now you're probably going, well, I'm never going to spend $2,000 on my pantry organization. But the truth is, while it does look pretty, there is like this hidden secret no one really talks about. And it's maintaining that type of pantry to look beautiful and to look perfect at all times actually takes a lot of work. And I can promise you she's got a full-time staff <laughs> probably just working in her pantry alone to make sure it looks beautiful at all times. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have the funds or resources to hire people to maintain my kitchen and my decanter jars and make my pantry and keep it looking beautiful and the fridge and whatever else you want to organize to make it look beautiful all the time. And so my goal in my home was to declutter enough so that I actually wouldn't need a lot of those organizational products and to kind of lower my expectations some and be okay and be comfortable with not having it be perfect because that I think brings on its own stress to maintain this level of perfection and this Instagram or Pinterest perfect after. And these different organizational products like clear bins and these beautiful labels, and I get it, it's so aesthetically pleasing. And if that's something you wanna do, I'm not knocking you to each their own. I will say the one really nice thing about them besides looking great aesthetically is that oftentimes if you do put the time and energy into maintaining it and making that system work for you, they continue to pay off. So do keep that in mind. But five bucks here, 10 bucks here, 20 bucks here, it all adds up. And when you expand that and look at your whole home and filling dressers and closets and bathroom vanities and under the kitchen cabinet and every single nook and cranny with these different organizational products, believe me, for most homes I've seen, it does add up to hundreds and thousands of dollars. So if that's not something you want to invest in, just take the pressure off yourself and instead focus on decluttering, which literally, again, it takes nothing. So maybe you do want to just have a beautiful pantry. It would mean a lot to you. It would make you happy. Like that's all good. But one question I would encourage you to ask yourself is who am I doing this for? Am I doing this because I just want to feel more like a Kardashian or someone I idolize or maybe one of like a professional organizer? Or am I doing this for me and my family? And will my family actually follow through and help me keep this pantry beautiful and these jars nice and organized? Or is it just going to be more stress and pressure on 
myself to have to maintain this in its own. And so let's say you do invest in the decanter jars and the labels and whatever it is to make your pantry or kitchen or any space in your home really beautiful. My question for you is if nobody ever saw that space beside you, would you still want to do it? Who are you doing this for? Are you doing it for someone else because you think you should? Because why? And if no one ever sees it and no one ever cares beside you, would you still do it? If the answer is yes, you have my blessing. By all means, do it. But if the answer is like, eh, maybe not, then maybe you reconsider that type of investment on those products. And again, start opening your pantry or your fridge and under the kitchen sink or anywhere your knee-jerk reaction has been, I need some type of organizational tool here. I would encourage you to see if there's anything else that you can let go before you add in a new product. And this is kind of why the term minimal messy is one that I've come to love and appreciate over the years. I don't have drawer dividers where I could use them in my home that would make it look more aesthetically pleasing. I don't have the cutest under the kitchen sink organizers. I don't have 10 to $15 lazy Susans in my cabinets where I could use them and where it would make it look prettier. I, I don't color code or label anything. The only thing we really label in my home is the garage totes because it's nice to know what's in them at a glance, right? Super basic things like that. I don't fold my fitted bed sheets in perfect little squares because I, that's not a priority for me. So I think part of this is going back and looking at what's a priority for me in this season of life and being okay with good enough. <laughs> It doesn't have to be perfect. And knowing that your home doesn't need to work for anyone but you and your family. It doesn't need to look like a pottery barn or an image out of good housekeeping to bless you and your family and to support you and your family. Seriously, it's a beautiful thing. And letting go of some of those aesthetics or even financial investments into some of these organizational products that can just be too much, can just be feel like a breath of fresh air. So if you're sitting there thinking about those bins you bought six months ago to solve your clutter problem, Problem that are now a part of the problem. You have they're overflowing and you've got so many bins you don't know what to do with. Don't worry, we've all been there. For a lot of people, it's part of the cycle. They just have to unlearn as you go through the simplifying and decluttering process. Want to learn how to break that clutter cycle? Click the video on your screen right now.